Ahoy there internet! In this video, in this video we're going to look at something I found while looking on the internet the other day. And it is this. This uh, is a GitHub page which will be linked in the description. Uh, it's from uh, Pret, which is the Pokemon reverse engineering team. And what they have done is they have taken the original Pokemon Red and Blue games and they have taken them and disassembled them so now we can have a look at the actual code uh, that makes up the games and we can have a play around with it. So that's what I thought I'd do in this video, we're going to have a look around uh, the code, poke around, break some things and see what happens. Uh, so uh, if you want to go and download the code you can just go to github, the page will be linked like I said. Uh, we can just download this uh, click clone with HTTPS and then go to a terminal, make sure you have git installed. You're also going to want to have installed uh, something called Make and Visual Boy Advance or a Game Boy emulator. So those are the things you'll need. There'll be links in the description for all that sort of stuff. We type in git clone. That's going to pull down the lovely little git repository. And then have a look. We should see we've got a new uh, little directory in there. And that should have all the code in there. And so what we can do is if I was to say uh, make uh, and then say uh, yeah just say, say make for now what it's going to do it's going to do a whole series of compilations and it's going to create us a file that we will be able to play using a uh, emulator so that's done that uh, and you should see now uh, yes so we've got uh, poker blue and we've also got uh, Pokemon Red dot, uh, GBC. So what we can now do is we can say open Poke Red dot GBC, and what this will do is it will open Pokemon in a cheeky little emulator like that. Wow, isn't that amazing? And then we can you know play the game. So what I thought I'd do is we'll have a look and we'll start by uh, just seeing what's in the code. And then we'll probably break some stuff. Maybe we'll change the starter Pokemon to something like one of them be Mew or something like that. So uh, let's go and have a look at all the code. So let's go and look around. Um, so there are a number of uh, folders we can look at. Uh, one of them is called constants. And if we have a look in here, this has um, the Pokemon constants, which you can see there. So if we have a look in here, what we can see is going to be a list of all the Pokemon, right? And what I thought was pretty interesting about this is that we actually have um, missing now in here. There's actually a few missing notes. Now, if you remember the, the games, there used to be a bug where if you would surf up and down on Cinnabar Island, uh, this Pokemon called Missing No would show up. Um, and now, I don't know whether these have actually been put in there by the game's designers or whether these were put in here as a result of the disassembly process. But what we can see here is obviously all the names for all the Pokemon, they're all in capital letters, and if we wanted to change a Pokemon uh, at some point in the game, we would have to refer to them uh, by these names that they've got here. So if we, we look at this, um, we can go and find uh, a file. There's a file in this folder called Startermons, and this tells us what the starters are, right? So you've got Starter 1, Charmander, Starter 2 is Squirtle, and of course Starter 3 is uh, Bulbasaur, which is statistically the best. So if I start the game, all right, uh, if we come out of this, uh, come back, and we just open Pokemon Red, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through quickly and get to the point where we can actually pick our starter Pokemon. Okay, so I'm now at the point where you can pick your first starter Pokemon. If we look at all these, uh, these balls here, we've got a cheeky little Charizard there, and of course, if we know we don't want that one, we look at, let's say, this one here, Squirtle, obviously, and of course, the last one is uh, Bulbasaur. So if we were to look again at this, uh, if I were to quickly save and then go back to the code. So if we were to have a look at this code, what we can do is if we can go back, have a look at those constants, that start amons file. And if we were to take Squirtle, for example, and change it to Mew, Right, we can save out of that. Then we can call make to recompile the uh, the program, the game, and then we can reopen it. Because I've saved the uh, the state, I should be able to simply load that, and I can make it big, 
And if we move uh, to this one where Squirtle was, we will now find that we have Mew there. So that's pretty cool. So now we've got uh, Mew instead of Squirtle. Don't want to give it a nickname. And so he picks a Bulbasaur. If we were to look at our party, it's actually got Mew there as opposed to having Bulbasaur. So the next thing I wanted to have a look at was um, the Pokemon that appear on Roots. And it, it turns out that the way they've done this is, or at least the way that it shows in Disassemble programs, is that each route has a, a list of Pokemon. And it has different Pokemon that are going to obviously show up for each route, and they have a different frequency of those Pokemon. So if we have a look in the data folder, there is a, another folder called Wild Pokemon. If we have a look in there, and then we can see all the routes and all the areas that we can actually go to. So from Palette Town to uh, Viridian City is, I think it's Viridian, is Route 1. So we can have a look here, and we can see that here are the Pokemon that we have. Um, so what this is, is this is saying the level here, so level 3, and then it's saying uh, the Pokemon that actually shows up. So if we just like knacker off all of this, uh, actually let's leave one, and we change this, so we could say change this to uh, Mew2, and let's make it, I don't know, level 100. And then we could also um, do the same thing again, but this time uh, let's, you know, get a uh, Ditto, for example. And uh, what I'm going to do, because the number of times that these things show up is due to their frequency, I'm just going to copy these a few times. Whoops. Yeah, I'm just going to copy the whole line a few times. Ah, did not want to do that. I wanted to do this. No, we're gonna do, we're gonna get this right. There we go. Cool. Uh, so if we go back a few uh, directories and we call make again, we're gonna recompile this and then reopen the program, the game, and that's gonna reopen. I'll make it big and then I will load a state. Load the most recent state wherever the button is. There we go. And if we go into this now, it's this grass now, we should find that eventually we get one of those Pokemon and it will be level 100. It starts working, there we go, it's level 100. Now, one of the issues is here that we can't actually catch anything because we have no Pokeballs. Now, and also, there's no real way we are going to catch uh, level 100. So, the way we need to actually do this is we need to go to the mart and buy some pokeballs but wouldn't it be cool if we could actually go there and instead of buying pokeballs we could buy master balls and we could also buy like rare candies and stuff like that so let's have a look at how we could do that so if we look in the uh, data directory we'll find that there are two files that we'll be interested in one of them is called item prices and the other one is called uh, mart inventories so if we look first at item prices we can see here we've basically got this list um, which has the price of an item on one side. So, you know, if we were to change uh, the Pokeball from uh, 200 to zero, it would now be free. We can see we've got a Master Ball here that costs nothing. If we go down and find uh, the rare candy, we can change this to zero and that will now be free. But we need to get it into the Mart. So, to do that, if we open the file Mart Inventories, we can see here we've got a list of um, the actual uh, items we can buy from each particular mart. So we're looking at Viridian. So if I were to say uh, Master Ball and Rare Candy, when we go to Viridi Vir uh, Viridian in a second and we go to the mart there, we will actually be able to buy a Pokeball for free because we changed the price of Pokeballs. We'll be able to get Rare Candies for free and we'll also be able to get Master Balls for free. So if we have a look now, we can do that. So I'm going to redo all that, make it, open it, and I'm going to skip forward to actually go to the mart. So if we go to the mart, uh, we can talk to the uh, the guy here, the cashier, and we can see the Pokeballs are for free. And also, if we go down, hopefully we should have a Master Ball and we should have rare candies. So we can order as many of these as we like, 99 of those. And let's order 99 rare candies as well, because we can totally do that. So now we can go down and just totally catch those uh, one of the Pokemon that we find in here, which will be either a Mewtwo or a Ditto. So if we go to item, rare candy, Master Ball, 
that is going to save and catch perfect straight away uh, so there are other few things I wanted to have a look at, so let's go and have a look at uh, those sort of things now. The thing I wanted to look at was what happens when you go through a door in Pokemon. So what, what actually happens is uh, the game has this concept of a warp, right? So we can have a look at the data, and then there is a folder called Map Objects. And in here, there are all the places you can go in the game, right? So we're currently in Viridian uh, City. So if we have a look at this, we can see here we've got um, this idea of a warp. And what a warp is, is saying, okay, so we're on these squares, so when we hit this square, when we step on this square, we're going to go to uh, the poker center. And sure enough, if we were to have a look in here, we would probably find that there is a file called, if I can spell it right, uh, poker center. So if we look at the poker center, we have that, and then that's telling us uh, what happened and where we... Uh, where we warp and we'll warp uh, back to where we came from if we go back out of the door we came from so let's have a look back here again if we were to change this poker center to uh, hall of fame ah! hall of fame and then remake the program reopen it make it nice and big load the most recent state so we're, we're in Viridian City right now if we were to go through the poker center uh, we should go to the Hall of Fame although it might not work the very first time for some weird reason I've noticed it might be to do with the actual Game Boy so come through and try it again we should go to the Hall of Fame and now we can go through all of this da -da 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 -da, and we have basically completed the game even though we really haven't uh, and it's just because of the way that the game works is that it has a series of things that happen when you step on certain places. And we can have a look at those sort of things now. And as well as stepping on places, there are also predefined things that occur um, when other things occur. So, for example, uh, you, you trigger a certain action because of something that happens in the game. Well, a series of things will happen in a sort of imperative style. So if we have a look uh, in the engine folder... We can see a whole series of these sort of things. So, for example, uh, we have uh, things like um, blackout. So, when all of your uh, Pokemon uh, have ran out of HP, what happens is well, we can have a look what happens. One of the things that happens is you you half your money. Uh, if we can have a look over here, so we do stuff like this. You, you your money gets halved, uh, and then what will happen is you will uh, your party will be healed, and Sure enough, there is a heal party series of actions in the engine. So this this basically will be called anytime you want to heal your uh, uh, Pokemon, say a Pokemon Center, or uh, when you black out, for example. Um, and it does all sorts of things here. So you can see that what it's doing is it's going through and restoring the PP, so the the, the moves of the Pokemon, and also restoring the HP as well of all the Pokemon's uh, in your party. And we can have a look now as well of what happens uh, in the Hall of Fame. So what happens in the Hall of Fame is a whole series of things because when you when you step into the Hall of Fame, it just triggers an action. You start walking towards uh, Oak. It's, he starts talking and then a whole series of things happen, uh, including things like it goes through all of your party. So it loops through all of the Pokemon in your party. Uh, and then once it's done that, uh, it displays them. And it will also... Uh, create a text box that shows um, things like the po the Pokemon in your party and it will show things like the, the play time that you had so if we have a look uh, for time I think it is we can see here we've got this uh, the play time that we have we also have our players name and that gets that shown and then what happens is we go through all of this and then it should do something like call the credits which is what it does here so I think that's about everything I wanted to sort of go over in this video because it was more of just a sort of exploration of uh, of the disassembled code. Like I say, if you want to do this yourself, you can have a look at the uh, GitHub and the links in the description and you should be able to follow along all that and uh, that'll be all good. Cool. Might make another of these videos in the future depending on uh, what people think. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.